already we've done a little bit of prep. So I've already created my Parmesan cheese. That's 10 seconds at speed 10, and it comes beautiful, very finely chopped. So I've done that already. I've transferred into a bowl. I'm skipping the uh, step to add bread. In the traditional uh, Parmigiana, we don't add the bread. So I'm just going to skip that step. And um, I'm going to skip another step, which is adding some thyme because my husband doesn't like it. But uh, instead of thyme, we can add some um, some oregan. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a trick if you like it. Like we like it with the, um, with the basil, like we just the flavor of the basil, but you can add some uh, oregan or thyme. Um, again, it's asking me to put some 200 grams of mozzarella cheese, which I've got it already. Five seconds at speed six. That's how we have it. I'm gonna click next, and then I'm gonna start from here, which is I'm gonna add two garlic cloves. Next, uh, 150 grams of onions quartered. You can say there we go. A little bit more. That's okay. I went to 170, but that's all right. A little bit of extra onion, one uh, one heart. I'm gonna click on next. It's telling me to add the olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, very important. Uh, when we cook Italian and Spanish, we always use only the extra virgin olive oil. Sorry for that. And again, I'm just gonna add a little bit extra because um, that's something that we really love in this, in this cuisine. All right, so next telling me like to insert the measuring cup and it's going to chop the onion and the garlic together. Five seconds at speed five. It's done. Just going to show you quickly. How it comes five seconds, speed five. The onion and the garlic is perfectly chopped. Now it will ask me, which I've done already, to scrape down the sides with a mixing spatula. Asking me to pop the lid back on, and then it's gonna saute for five minutes at speed one, at 120, 120 degrees. So what I'm gonna do in the meantime, is I'm just going to prepare the eggplant. I have I have previously sliced the eggplant, like basically, like two, three centimeters. The traditional parmigiana um, is slightly different when you deep fry it. Sorry, excuse me. You just you just basically have to slide it uh, long side. But we've done it, which I find is a little bit easier to cook here in the Varoma in the steam in round cycles of two, three centimeters. So just gonna prepare on the Varoma dish. And I need to make sure that some of the holes are not covered. So the steam can come up. So I'm just going to put all my eggplant here. So basically there's a few variances of this recipe and uh, it's basically how you cook as well the tomato sauce. As I said, I'm just going to do a little variance. Um, this tomato sauce that I'm gonna to cook tonight is infused with fresh basil. So it, it is very, very fresh and simple and delicious. So we're not using many herbs or many spices or ingredients, but it's beautiful as is. Because uh, the eggplant is already has like a, already like a strong flavor and combined with the tomato sauce, fresh basil and cheeses is Perfect. Um, this is a dish that, although it's vegetarian, it doesn't have any meat or fish like we eat often in my house because it's, it's, it makes you feel quite full as well. And it's with the pot, like you've got the eggplant again and tomatoes and, and fresh um, ingredients. Elena, we just have a question there. Is, is that just one eggplant? It must be a oh, very- Oh, sorry, not. Uh, for these recipes, usually two to four eggplants. 
if it's small eggplants, I've used four small ones today. But sometimes when I find that they're really massive, I just need two is enough. But it's basically like, would say between 850 grams or a, between 850 grams and a kilo of eggplants. So between two and four. Great, thank you. So this is how it would look. All right, so making sure that there's some holes. And, and it's gonna steam for 20 minutes. So my varoma is ready. I'll just cover it up. Oh, sorry. Just make sure like the lid sits perfectly and it doesn't remain open. So it will steam perfectly. And we'll pop this on top of the bowl as soon as the saute is done. So basically my screen is telling you to rearrange, to arrange the, um, the eggplants. And I don't know if you can see Janine on the screen. That's what it says. A thousand grams, one kilo of eggplants, which is approximately three eggplants. And it's two minutes to go. So um, one important thing as well, I'm using the peeled tomatoes, the canned, canned peeled tomatoes. And it's very important that you strain the, to the tomatoes. So the recipe is telling me to use 800 grams, which is approximately two tins of uh, the peeled tomatoes. But because it's got lots of water in it, I'm using three, um, three cans of uh, peeled tomatoes and I've strained them. So the water has gone away. Otherwise, if you leave the water, when you um, lay all the layers on the uh, baking dish, it will be very watery. And we don't want it to be that watery. We want the uh, tomato sauce to be thick and powerful. And even though, because I prepared my tomatoes a little bit earlier, still has some water. So I'm just gonna strain them a little bit again. And so just to let everybody know, yes, we definitely are recording. Sorry, we missed the uh, beginning of the class, but um, definitely recording and we're doing all cookie do recipes and we'll share the recording and the links to the recipes with you, you know, sometime over the next 24 hours. So you can go back and have a look at your leisure. So these are the tomatoes that I'm using today. And it's, it's 400 grams, every can of tomatoes. But when you remove the water, it shrinks down to 250. So three uh, tins of tomatoes. If you're using the uh, passata, like uh, there's another brand that um, it's not like the peeled tomatoes, you can use just two tins. It depends on the, the how you, um, so which tomato sauce are you buying? And it's 10 seconds not to go. Now, the, the one thing that I'm going to do that uh, this recipe is not asking me to do, but I do, uh, is I'm gonna blend the tomatoes. So I, just because my daughter doesn't like to find, to, to find in the recipe, the chunks of tomatoes. So if I blend them, she'll eat everything. So. So nice when it's asking me to add the tomatoes. It was uh, quite a few years ago, Elena, I was at a, at a cooking class, a Thermomix cooking class, and we had a chef come in. Um, and one of his little recommendations was to always make sure that you buy if you're buying tins of tomatoes to make sure that they're whole because you get a much better quality tomato rather than if they're if they're already chopped oh, yeah. so i yes, thought so. that was a good tip it is it actually is that's why i think we buy the um the peel whole tomatoes just gonna add a little bit of extra um extra virgin olive oil as well to cook so i'm just going to go out now to blend the tomatoes so I click on the uh, home screen on the menu and I'll go on the modes. I'll select blend. And I'm going to blend it for just five seconds. Well, 10 seconds because it's the minimum that I'm allowed with the modes. But so apologies for the noise. So what Elena did there, she tapped on the house. Yeah. 
and that will take you out of the recipe. It just bookmarks the recipe in the background. You can go and do something else, use the sales, use the blend function. And then when she's ready to come back, she's going to attach that house to home key. So my tomato sauce is completely blended now. And I'm going to add, it's around 10 fresh basil leaves. But again, if you go just a little bit over, it should be fine. So I got them here, I, pre I washed them before. And yeah, because Javi loves basil, because uh, he's Italian, so I'm just gonna add a little bit extra. And I click on next. Um, it's asking me to add one table, one teaspoon of salt. Next, I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of sugar. This recipe doesn't ask me to, but the Spanish or Italian recipe asks me to add some sugar to reduce the acidity of the tomatoes. And now, it's asking me to place the Varoma on top of the bowl instead of the, instead of the measuring cup. I'm placing the Varoma with my eggplant on top of it. And it's gonna cook for 20 minutes at a speed one. So I'm uh, now I've got like 20 minutes cooking and I've got some time to do something else, you need. Okay, okay well, well, back to you. Elena. Okay. Um so now we are heading over to <laughs> we're heading over to Sophie and um Sophie's going to be making, starting her uh, cauliflower, roasted cauliflower tacos with a chipotle sauce. Um, and I must admit, I'm a little bit excited for this one. So I'm just going to find Sophie because she's moved. She's been doing a little bit of juggling. So here you go. Hi, Sophie. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. So I'm going to be doing the chipotle tacos. Now, I found this recipe in lockdown a few weeks ago. I'm a bit of a cookie-do nerd. I don't like to cook a recipe more than a couple of times. So I always try to venture out and try new recipes all the time. Um, and this was an absolute winner. And I've been vegetarian now, gosh, since I was about 14. Um, so coming up to, well, eight years now, um, going into my ninth year of being vegetarian. And at 14, when I told my mother I was going vegetarian, she looked at me and she said, good luck cooking dinner every night. And from that day, I have had to cook myself dinner. And the Thermomix saved my life during that process. Um, as I got older, I ended up being able to get one of these. But this recipe reminds me of um, buffalo chicken bites, but think of like the healthy version. So what I've done is I've just pre-done steps one to four, and that's just some coconut milk, um, in a bowl with one lime zest, uh, one lime that I've just zested. And then this is a beautiful crumb that we're gonna make. And I use a super seedy, couple of slices of super seedy bread. Um, and then it's just paprika, cumin, uh, gosh, I think that's it. Paprika, cumin, uh, salt, turmeric. So that gets that beautiful orange color. Um, and that's just blitzed up in the Thermomix. So that is just there like so. Um, and then I've just got cauliflower florets. So I did a cauliflower and a half and I actually ended up doubling everything. So all I did was when I popped this in the machine and popped this into the bowl, um, I just doubled everything that Cookie Doo said because I like to eat these as like a snack and I just dip it in the chipotle sauce that we're gonna be making and it's all vegan. Um, so it's dairy free as well. So I just grab a cauliflower floret. This is where you kind of get a bit messy. You pop it in the coconut milk and then you just crumb it in that bread dip there. And then you pop it on your baking tray. And I'm just gonna repeat this with the whole cauliflower until all of this sauce is gone. Um, and then I'm gonna bake it at 200 degrees in the oven. And then it's pretty much um, a really super quick takes less than a minute chipotle sauce that I'll show you how to make in the Thermomix. Um, and the base of that is cashews. Um, and then you just piece it all together as a, as a taco. Um, we also do it as salad bowls, a little bit of a snack, uh, and it tastes divine. It's even better the next day. I love food out of um, the fridge next day. I'm always looking for meals that I can get a double use out of or a double dinner. Um, 
So that's me doing that. Um, so yes, I'm nearly done with this. So that's going into a, a nice hot oven, Sophie? Yeah, at 200 degrees and they bake for about 20 minutes. If you do the florets smaller, they will they don't need as much time. I think that's the thing I really, with my Thermomix as well, being vegetarian and, and now my family trying, we're trying to um, reduce our meat consumption quite heavily, um, just with everything that's going sort of on in the world. But um, that's the thing about the Thermomix is as soon as I got it, the amount of recipes that and the new dishes I was trying um, and expanding all my different food flavors. I mean, I would have never thought to look up a recipe like this or make a recipe like this um, if Cookie Doo didn't put it in my suggested. Um, I do a lot of browsing because on that front home page, I don't know if any of you guys know, but they have a little suggested for you. And as you cook more in Cookie Doo, that suggested area becomes really good because um, it really finds recipes out of the eight and a half, I think close to 9,000 we've now got access to. And um, it really customizes it to sort of what you've been cooking recently. So that is. Yeah, I love those new, uh, the filters that we can put on now and they hold those. I, I'm doing chefy cook at the moment, just for a little bit of fun, but I can always change it. So um, yeah, nice to have a, have do something a little bit different. Yeah, and the cauliflower hasn't been steamed before. I just chopped it up into florets. So um, it's raw right now. So it just gets baked and gets nice and crispy. Um, chipotle tacos, yes, they are. It's cauliflower tacos with a chipotle sauce, which once these are finished cooking, I'll show you how to make the chipotle sauce. It's got, you know, coriander, lime, um, cashews as the base instead of cream. Um, Yes, it's one of my favorite recipes. I love this one actually. And the lime zest in the coconut milk really adds that beautiful flavor. Did you pop in? No. Oh, did you take your monitor? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the monitor. Mute some in, in the boys' room. Yeah. Might be Nadine. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll get this tray in the oven and then start on my second tray. But this is the tacos now, and they'll take 20 minutes at 200 degrees to cook. Um, and so, then, Sophie, someone's asked, has the, um, has the florets been steamed prior? No, they're just raw. I just chopped up the cauliflower whole um, and then coated and crumbed it here. So, no, they haven't been steamed. So I'm going to pop these in the oven. Are we ready to go to the next person? I think so, um, and I think that might be me. So Terry might like to um, share the uh, link for Sophie's recipe for the cauliflower tacos with the chipotle sauce. Um, as I say, we're also going to share those with you on an email as well. So, um, so what am I making? I am making a quite a delicious um, dish that I've made um, a little while ago, and. And it kind of lends itself to a few variations. And pesto is such one of those, you know, kind of great, um, you know, things that you can do, uh, you know, a few different things with. There's an awesome um, chunky basil pesto dip in, in Cookie Doo. Um, you can pop it onto pizzas. You could pan fry it with some chicken. Um, you know, it, it really is quite versatile. But um, so what I'm going to do, I have done a little bit of prep work on this because there was um, some stuff going into the oven first. So um, if I just press start cooking on my guided cooking, preheated my oven, lined a baking tray, and I'll just show you um, quickly. I don't know if you've seen these in the mix shop, but I'm, I'm actually fallen in love with them. So the rose gold bakeware is absolutely awesome. Like the quality is just incredible. Uh, but they've also now got these liners. So instead of having to use baking paper all the time, um, 
you know, you can just pop these in and you can use them for any kind of baking. I roasted the pumpkin and stuff on there um, earlier in the evening. So you just wash it and you can reuse them. So I just wanted to show you those. They're in the, um, they're available in the mix shop. Um, so four cloves of garlic, throw um, into the bowl, chop that for three seconds, scrape down the sides, then add some olive oil. And then I added in uh, 400 grams of um, chopped up pumpkin. I mean, if you wanted to, you could use sweet potato, but I've gone with the butternut pumpkin. Um, and then you pop all that in and it, the machine pops itself into reverse and it just stirs that around for five seconds. To be honest, you could just do that in the bowl if you wanted to, you, you actually don't need to pop it in there. So that goes into the oven and you bake that for about 20 minutes. And then without cleaning the mixing bowl, um, where this is where I'm up to now. So we're gonna head in, into the recipe. So the first thing it's asking for is 50 grams of Parmesan cheese. I'm just going to tear the scales on my machine because I lifted off the uh, lid. So I've got a little bit more, that's totally fine. And then we press next. So two cloves of garlic. We do like garlic in my house. So they're pretty, pretty big chunky ones. Then we press next. So um, Zoom's going to chop this out for a couple of seconds because it uh, cuts down the noise. So just five seconds on speed seven. So I'm just gonna turn that dial and um, chop away for five seconds. Okay, then we press next, scrape down sides of the mixing bowl. So I'll just give you a quick look. It's really doesn't need scraping. It's just given that a chop. I mean, if you want that really fine Parmesan, obviously you would go a little bit longer. And I think, you know, we've probably got quite a few new owners on, but you can, um, you know, use your Thermomix by the sound. So if you just wanted to throw a handful of Parmesan in there and blitz it on speed eight or nine for a couple of seconds, you'll be able to hear when the chopping's done. It's kind of really noisy and then it, it smooths out. Um, so good to... Um, use your, you know, it just helps you with your manual cooking as well. So 40 grams of fresh basil going straight into the bowl. The basil smells amazing, by the way. Uh, then we've got um, 100 grams of baby spinach. So just pop that in there. A juice of a lemon. I had quite a big lemon, so I'm not quite sure I'll put all, oh, may as well put all of it in there. And then we just press next, 20 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Now I am going to, um, this recipe um, doesn't have any, pine nuts in it. Um, so a little pinch of sea salt going in. Uh, and I do like my pesto with a little bit of pine nuts. So I, I'm not quite sure how much I've got there. I think it was like 20 grams or something like that. So a little bit of pepper, pop that in. Press next. So I'm actually just gonna pop that, um, pop the pine nuts in there as well. So insert my measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid. Press next. So I'm just going to chop that for five seconds on speed seven. Okay, so repeat blending if necessary. So I'm just going to have a look. It looks pretty good to me. It's a little bit chunky. It's not super fine, but I kind of don't mind that, to be honest. I might just give it one more second. So I don't know if you can see that there. Just give it, um, just give it another couple of seconds. Pop our lid on. Press next. So five seconds. Okay. Press next. So what I'm going to do is set that aside. I'm going to pop it into a bowl 
Um, then I am going to, um, so that's just kind of come down to a bit more of the paste. Look at that color, isn't that just amazing? And the smell is absolutely incredible already. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decant that into a bowl and then I'm going to give my bowl a quick rinse. I'm going to pop in um, a litre of water in there. I'm just going to get that up to the boil and then I'll come back to you really quickly and show you putting the pasta in the bowl and how you can cook spaghetti um, in your thermomix as well. So we'll come back to that. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to head over to Betty now and Betty's doing the um, egg curry. Um, I have a chat to you about this a little bit later. This is the gift we've purchased at the moment. It's called Meals in a Flash. And uh, there are a couple of really gorgeous vegetarian recipes in there. And Betty's recipe is actually out of this book. Um, so let me find Betty and then we can head over to her. Here she is here. Hi everyone, I'm Betty. <laughs> Thanks, Janine. Um, so I am making um, egg with um, coconut curry sauce from the Meal in a Flash cookbook. Um, this recipe doesn't take very long. It takes about 15 minutes prep time and a total cooking time of 30 minutes. So you will have a meal in a flash on your table. And I did um, make a tiny change to it. This recipe takes you all the way from start to end um, and it will, it will it, it asks you to cook the egg in a steaming basket in the jug. But because TM6 has um, the egg boiler function, I have actually decided to use um, egg boiler function because I do like eggs um, sort of um, medium. I don't like them too, too hard at all. So if you can see my screen, this is the egg boiler function. What I did was um, I had eggs that were in the fridge, like they were cold, and I popped them in just like that around the blades. And I filled the water up to one liter. And then I just turned the dial to medium because I want the center to be soft. If you're not sure what these mean, just click on the eye. That's the information to tell you what, how, how, how hard or how soft the egg would be after you've cooked it. And I've actually pre-cooked this and it's ready for peeling, but just to make it peel better, I should put some ice in it so that the water is nice and cold. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to start with my spare bowl. Going back to my recipe, just a small tip, oopsie, if you guys don't already know, that if um, you're going to start at a um, step that you want to instead of starting from beginning, you can always pull it down and I'm going to do step two. Um, it's such an easy and nice smelling recipe. I actually had it for lunch today. Um, in go 150 gram of um, onion, two garlic, I should put a bit more in because I do like garlic. Ginger. I will talk to you about ginger later. These are not fresh, but they work really well. And then I need two long red chili cut into halves. I'm going to pop in my lid, measuring cup, and that's going to blitz it for five seconds. It's going to be a bit loud, so the soon will cut me off. And it's um, amazing how well everything cuts in the TM. Just have to show it off. It's beautiful. It will take you forever to chop it off, chop it with um, by hand. I'm going to add 20 gram of wheat. Half a teaspoon of ground turmeric. I'm going to be putting a bit more because I do like it nice and fragrant. And then um, ground malasa. Can't have curry without it. So it's a really nicely fragrant um, curry that's cooked so quickly. And then some salt to taste. Black pepper, half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to just spread these down so it sits at the bottom of my 
bowl. <laughs> it smells so nice already, and the color is amazing. I'm going to cook this for two minutes at 120 degrees and um, stirring at speed one. With the ginger that I was going to talk to you guys about, you know how ginger is really expensive? Um, so I do bulk buy ginger when I see them on sale and I would peel the ginger skin off of the flesh of a teaspoon, just scrape it off. I would then slice it and then I will freeze them in a little ziplock bag. That always um, actually keeps the ginger really, really well. And I have I've had ginger in the freezer for a couple of months that stays fresh and it's perfect for cooking. Um, I find I always find that really helpful to have herbs in my freezer. And the other thing with this recipe is that it makes quite a lot of sauce and um, there's um, a lot of variation to, to vegetarian meals, I guess. Apart from just boiled egg, I had it with a fried egg for lunch because I ran out of boiled egg. Um, you can also have it with um, a little bit of steamed tofu or even air fried tofu if you like mm -hmm. more crunchy. Even with a, um, a chickpea and corn fritter with this curry and maybe with rice, it will, it will taste really amazing. So this, this sauce is so versatile. And if you're only doing a green Monday, the next day you can have it with um, a piece of fried chicken or, or shredded chicken breast. It will still taste um, really, really, really good. So um, this, I actually just batched made this for, 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 for someone a few days earlier. And I think I ended up being able to make, to portion it into 10 little takeaway boxes plus left over for lunch today. So there were like 10, 11 portions very, very, very easily. So it's a really generous um, recipe. So something you could consider making or even batch make it put it in boxes, stick it into the freezer so you have a nice fragrant curry sauce whenever you need it. Microwave it up but open, have it warmed up in the TM. So that's two minutes, it's all cooked. It's um, looking really well. Because it's such an easy recipe, um, I'm almost um, finishing all the steps I need to do. So next I'm gonna add in 400 grams of um, coconut milk. I have chosen coconut cream because I do like the coconut taste. And then put this back on. And this time I'm going to cook for five minutes. Um, in five minutes, the sauce will be cooked and I will have um, given it a quick blend. Just to keep it quiet a little bit. And I'll be um, back to show you the finished product. So um, back to you, Denise. Thank you. I love that um, idea of just having a, such a quick little curry. Now, what I wanted to show you is that my um, water has come up to the boil. So all I'm going to do is turn that dial and I need to weigh in about, um, I'll just press next, um, 200 grams of pasta into the bowl. So, and all I do is just pop it in the top like that. And it's just going to cook away. Doesn't that look cute when it does that? I absolutely love it. And um, that's just going to cook away for 10 minutes and then we'll come back. And as it cooks, it'll shrink down into the bowl. So I uh, just wanted to show you that really quickly. Now we're going to head over to Sophie and she's going to do her chipotle sauce. Here we go. Hello everyone, I'm back. So I'm going to do the chipotle sauce that goes with the uh, cauliflower florets that are currently just cooking away in the oven. So what I've done is I've just had some cashews that I soaked today. If you ever get asked in a recipe to soak cashews and you don't have the six hours it asks you to soak, um, you can just pop them in boiling water for 30 minutes. Um, so that's what I did because I completely forgot. <laughs> so I popped them in boiling water and then I just for 30 minutes and then I just drained them in my simmering basket um, here. So this is 100 grams of cashews and I'm just going to pop them into my mixing bowl and then click next and we're going to just give them a quick blitz. So I'll pop my lid on. Oh, go back and flip that around on speed 10, it'll be loud.
Perfect. So that's done now. Mm. I am going to lift that up. So that's like a paste now. So you've turned your cashews into a paste. Um, and now I'm going to add in 150 grams of water. So I've got my water here and I'm just going to weigh that in. Perfect. Two teaspoons of chipotle chilies in adobe sauce. You can just get this in Woolies. Um, and I use it in a few recipes, a lot of Mexican inspired recipes. So two teaspoons of that. Totally not vegetarian, but you can use it in the adobo beef recipe as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, though, and this is what I was going to say. So I, when I'm in cookie do, I actually, I'm just popping in half a lime, the juice of half a lime. When I'm in cookie do, I actually don't filter down to vegetarian recipes. I would say that 90% of the recipes on cookie do, even if they are meat-based, um, I can just change them to being vegetarian. Um, and I do that a lot if I want to make it dairy-free as well. I'm about to start a 30-day challenge with a few ladies that are on here. And um, Dairy Free is on one of the cards. So I'll be doing that as well. But I swap out all the time um, meat in recipes for other things. So I do a lot of mushrooms, um, chickpeas, um, you know, any canned beans that I have sitting in my fridge, lentils, um, you name it, I'll just swap it out. And it's quite easy. So I just put in a big bunch of coriander. I have half the lime in there. And... Now I'm going to do a little bit of salt, which I'm going to grab from here, and a little bit of pepper, and insert the measuring cup. And now I'm going to give that a blend, and that sauce will be done. So that just blends for 20 seconds. Awesome, so that's done. Um, so that'll be our chipotle sauce that will drizzle over that cauliflower when we're making it into tacos. Uh, so that's that there, nice and blended. Yeah, so if any of you ever want help with recipe conversion, um, to change recipes up a little bit um, to suit your needs and your family, reach out to your consultant um, mm. and ask because it is really easy once you get the hang of it. And I pretty much never follow a recipe as Cookie Doo states. I always say to my customers, Cookie Doo is guided cooking and I definitely take that in my stride. That is that chipotle sauce done. And ready to top on the tacos when they come out of the oven in the next five minutes. Okay, thank you. Where are we heading to now? We're going back to Elena and she is going to be um, putting her dish together that's going to go into the oven for us. Are you ready to go, Elena? Yes, yes, I am. Thank you, thank Jenny. You. So all the, uh, the eggplant is cooked. I've used my Maroma tray as well to make the heat to go away. So the eggplant is perfectly cooked is still soft but it's still together if you notice that your eggplant is not 100 percent cooked or you like it a bit well done then you just can pop it on the varam on the same temperature another like five or ten minutes but for this i'm happy of how it is i'm just gonna tilt my screen down so you can see what i'm doing so i've already layered a little a very thin layer of tomato sauce so that's how the tomato sauce came came up so I'm going to start a very thin layer of tomato sauce. I'm going to pop all my eggplant slices in here. I'm going to top it with a little bit of parmesan, sprinkle a little bit of parmesan cheese on top. The more, the better. <laughs> now I'm just going to pop the, some mozzarella cheese. 
these are with these ingredients, these variants, um, it's a typical recipe from the um, Napoli in south of Italy, but you can use other cheeses. In other regions of Italy, they use like escamorza cheese or any other cheese that you like and that you have in the, in, in the freeze, in the fridge. Just gonna pop now another layer of tomato sauce. I'm going to aim to do three full layers. That's how we like it. All on thick. Again, now another layer of eggplant. There we go. Then also remember, even if it's um, the eggplant is not a hundred percent soft, remember it's gonna cook in the oven for another like fifteen minutes or so. This is like a little Tetris. I'm doing more Parmesan cheese. Can use provolone cheese as well. Just gonna use my, my, my mozzarella. You can never have too much cheese. Never, never. <laughs> Absolutely. One more of tomato. So that's why, um, that's why my daughter likes it because she doesn't like to find the chunks of tomato. That's why I blend the tomatoes. Um, and I don't know if everyone knows, but when you are in the middle of a recipe, you can click on the three dots on top of your screen and um, it can take you to the scale or the, um, sorry, no, eggplants, can take you to the scales or you can go back and see the, um, the recipe details without leaving your recipe. And then you can bookmark, sorry, you can go back to your bookmark and then start from where you were with your recipe. Also, you can just, as I did earlier, go out, blend, and then come back from to my recipe. There was only the two cheeses, wasn't there, Elena? Was there yes. a third cheese? Yes, no, for this one, I'm only using Parmesan cheese and mozzarella cheese. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I'm just going to finish it up with that. I'm just going to put some mozzarella. I'm not going to finish it up with tomato and more cheese on top. So it will create a crust. Then with this one, you've got the option to add, to top it up with some breadcrumbs, which um, not, I'm not going to do because that's not the variance as the uh, traditional recipe that I'm making today. But definitely you can add some breadcrumbs on top just to finish it up. So I'm almost done. This is the last, last layer. And then now I'm gonna put mozzarella and the Parmesan on top, it will make it a little bit brownish and crunchy on top. Also, um, I use the uh, block, the parmesan block, and the parm and the mozzarella block cheese, because then I can grate it in my thermomix in just a few seconds. Because when you buy your cheese at the supermarket, and it's already grated, it's, it's got lots of preservatives of, and anti-caking agents. Um, so to avoid that, that's how I buy it in the block, and then with just a few seconds, I get it finally perfectly chopped. And I'm gonna pop it in the oven for 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, depending on your oven, you always can leave it a bit um, longer and then you can give it like another extra five minutes grill, depending on your oven type. But I'll show you the results in about 15 minutes or so. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Elena. That looks really yummy. I can't wait to see it come out of the oven. Thank you. Okay, now we're heading back to Miss Sophie. And uh, Sophie's going to be putting together her lovely tacos and, and doing her final little presentation. Yes. Um, sorry, my thermomix was just cleaning itself over, so I've just stopped it. Um, so it wasn't too noisy. But what I've got here is uh, the other half of that lime, my chipotle sauce, um, some wholemeal wraps, and I'm pretty sure my time is just my cauliflower florets. And I actually gave it really simple. 
Um, and then I've just got some lettuce. So the recipe does ask you to pop refried beans and sauerkraut. And I did do that the first time I made this recipe. Um, but for tonight, I just felt like something really simple. So I've got myself my uh, mini wrap and then I'm going to pop on some butter lettuce. I love lettuce. And then I'm gonna use my hands and do a couple of florets of that cauliflower and that beautiful crumb, don't let that fall away. I'll grab a spoon so I can sauce it up with my fingers. Grab that beautiful sauce, drizzle it on. And I'll show you guys, I'll grab you. Fresh lime juice, I love lime. So drizzle that on. And I'll pick you up and show you that taco there all finished and ready to enjoy. So that is gonna be someone's dinner. Someone very excited. It is a bit of a beast of a cauliflower taco, but have a couple of those. I mean, I use three pieces out of two trays of the cauliflower. So keeps really well in the fridge. Great little snack, have it on top of salads, even if you don't wanna have it as wrap. Um, yeah, a really great meal. And I hope you guys get to try it in your kitchens. That, that looks like a man-sized taco to me. Definitely. It's 8.24. I need to be eating it. Oh, my goodness. That looks amazing, Sophie. I think um, it, it kind of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a weird thing for me to say, but it kind of looks like a little bit like KFC when you do the cauliflower like that. It's beautiful. It's so nice and crispy and yeah. crunchy. I just love it. it I, I don't miss meat when I'm eating food like this. No, absolutely. And it, all those beautiful flavours as well and a little bit of texture. Yeah. Okay, I think it's my turn. I better look at my sheet. Yes, I think it is. So the pasta cooked and it went down into the bowl. And I just wanted to show you a little tip. So rather than having to, you know, tip your bowl into the steaming basket to drain your pasta, what I did was I just put the bowl in the top hold my spatula in there and then just tip it out during the sink down the sink and that will actually drain um drain your pasta for you so it's all perfectly intact i did cook mine a little bit longer i i think there's not an italian bone in my body because i seem to have to always cook my pasta a little bit more than what the recipe says um okay so it says to divide the pasta between the bowls, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it all into the one bowl. So I'll just tilt you down here so you can see what I'm doing. Excuse the uh, little bits and pieces. So I'm just going to literally pop that in there. It, um, you do get, a, you know, a tiny little bit of broken bits because it has kind of wrapped itself around the blade. Um, but that's okay. We just get that out. Essentially, it's all, all in one piece. Okay, so pop that to the side. Um, press next and it says to um, pop on my dressing, my pesto which I've got here. So I'm just going to scoop that into the bowl. And um, I've got some service here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of maneuver that through and kind of get it through into the pasta. Actually, I probably should use a fork. That would be a little bit easier. So just kind of, you know, folding it through, getting that beautiful sauce into everywhere. And then we're gonna do the dressing on the top. We've got some um, oven roasted pumpkin. Um, I've roasted some little Roma tomatoes, the little mini ones. And we know how all beautiful and sweet they go once they've um, been in the oven for it's probably about nine or 10 minutes. Um, so pop that in there. I did put a little bit of um, rocket in the bottom of the bowl. So then I'm just going to pop my 
pumpkin on the top. And that was roasted with, um, you know, two really big cloves of garlic. So again, very fragrant. And then here we've got our tomatoes. Actually, I might just give that a little bit of a, a little bit of a mix around. My presentation skills are not the best, but I think you get the idea. Okay, and then we'll pop the tomatoes just randomly over the top. All that beautiful sweet juice that's coming out. There's also some asparagus in there as well. Um, so you can see this makes quite a big portion. And then I've got some, um, I just toasted some walnuts in the oven and just gave them a little bit of a rough chop. Pop that on the top. Um, I've got a few extra little rocket leaves that I kept to the side. So I'll just pop a little bit of rocket on the top. A um, little sprinkle of sea salt. And pepper. And uh, there you go. That's a, um, and I did a herb and garlic uh, pizza dough. Just a really simple little dough. I actually had that in the freezer. So I popped it out of the freezer, allowed it to come to room temperature, and then just kind of did a little reprove on it. Um, it's got on the top olive oil, rosemary, garlic, salt, and pepper. So, you know, there is quite a substantial meal. My husband's sitting in the wings, absolutely dying for his dinner to come along. So um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy, um, enjoy that little one and give it a go. So now who are we heading to? I think we're going back to Betty and she's going to do her final little presentation for us of her beautiful, um, quick and easy egg curry. Definitely, it's really quick and easy. Um, didn't take much time for the curry to cook and it's all done. I will show you what it looks like. It doesn't look like a lot, but this actually serves like 10 servings easily. But what I actually want to show off is um, the eggs. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's um, perfectly cooked. This is um, cooked on medium on the egg boiler, so it's soft in the middle. Um, not overcooked just the way I like it. And if you counted the number of eggs I had, I've got some missing. They've been stolen by um, the two fingers already, um, even, even for the curry. So I'm just gonna pop this all together for you. I had some rice left. You could just have it with um, a sort of pizza if you like, um, but I usually, well, being Asian, <laughs> I do eat a lot of rice. So I should pop out two eggs on it. Put the curry on top. And a little bit of coriander. We love coriander. Oh, I love coriander. And a little bit of chili that I saved from the initial long chilies. I left a few cut in um, brown. So here you go. Um, very easy. Dinner, well balanced, protein and, and vegetables. And it's so quick. You must try it. Um, and please give the egg boiler more a go. It's just makes eggs perfect for, for curry or for any other um, occasions. Well, hope you enjoyed it and I do hope you give this a try. It's so quick and easy and it's really, really tasty too. Thank you, Betty. That looks absolutely gorgeous. And um, I really love the, col the color of that uh, curry as well. Oh. It looks really delicious. Egg boiler mode, I, it's the little things that keep me happy. It's my favorite mode on the TM6, um, hands down. A liter of water, two eggs straight out of the fridge, turn it the dial soft and away you go. Perfect. Oh. Okay, where are we headed to now? Um, I think we're going back to, Elena, are you ready to go? Would you like to, are you ready to go? Or do you want us to come back to you after Sophie? Yeah, after Sophie, please, if she's okay. ready. All right, no problem. We'll see you shortly. Hey, Soph. Hey, so I'm conscious of time, so I'll be quick, but. This is what I prepared earlier. Um, so these are my F&G bars. And I made this recipe up about six months ago when I was um, 
at a cafe and every Friday morning, my dad would get an FNG bar after our morning rides. And they're about $6 a pop. Um, and they're made out of figs, nuts and grains. And please excuse my French when my mother said to me this morning, are they fucking great bars? And I said, no, they're fig, nut and grain bars. <laughs> So um, she goes, oh, well, they are effing great. Oh, my goodness. Good one, Fiona. Yeah, so that was a bit of a laugh this morning. She's she's turning red behind me right now. Um, but if any of you guys haven't seen these in cafes, you'll notice them now that I've said the name. Um, but I just made them into mini muffins and I made my own recipe up. And it's in the Thermomix recipe community. So um, it'll be sent out in the email tomorrow so you can make them yourself. And I just use the manual cooking um, on my Thermomix, just that home screen when you uh, turn your Thermomix on. And basically you just blend all the ingredients together, pop them in. Um, this is my rose gold tray from the mix shop pop them in here in the oven for 20 minutes at 160 degrees. Um, and the ingredients in here are dates, figs, uh, pecans, sesame seeds, pepitas, sunflower seeds, one banana, uh, 60 grams of gluten-free flour, one egg, um, and that's it. And you just blitz it all up and it's super grainy and seedy and you have one of, or two of these um, mini bites and it just absolutely gets you through the afternoon, that sugar craving. Um, they're delicious. They are honestly to die for. I ate four this afternoon um, because I made 36 of them. <laughs> so um, that was sort of my pre-dinner that I had. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're a really great recipe, and I'd love for you guys to try them. So check it out in the email tomorrow when it pops through. Thank you, Sophie. When you said you ate four this afternoon, I must admit I was thinking of, you know, the four little oblong bars that you get in the cafes. I, I wasn't thinking that they were mini bites. So now I can totally see how um, you could smash four of those little, yeah. uh, of those little they keep, no problem. They keep really well as well. So they keep for a week on your bench tops. You don't have to, and they stay the same consistency. So Okay, so you don't need to pop them in the fridge or anything. You can just pop, put them in an airtight container. Yep, just an airtight container on your bench top and they'll keep for a good week. They're awesome. Have, have you frozen them? Have you had a go at freezing them? How do they defrost? Do they defrost okay? Or? Yeah. Oh, totally fine. I do a lot of cakes like that, but yeah, they defrost fine. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, we'll we'll share the recipe um, for those. Now I just wanted to show you this is the Meals in a Flash cookbook that um, is the gift with purchase for this month. Um so just a couple of little recipes I wanted to highlight. So the sweet potato pasta with a burnt sage butter. Um, I just love the idea of kind of taking something a little bit simple and, and you know, kind of giving that little bit of extravagant um, twist onto it. I think the other one is the egg curry. Oh, no, fresh tomato tart. I have made that one a couple of times. It's been a while, but um, I must put it back on my list. That is really, really is delicious. And I think, yeah, the other one was the um, eggs with the coconut curry sauce. So that is a free little gift with purchase um, for this month. And you also get the um, amazing Sologen Steel Kitchen Toolkit. Um, comes in this little pouch um, with all these kind of different, there's a few different knives, pairing knives. Um, my dad's a builder. He reckons these scissors are the best scissors on the planet. Um, you know, perfect like for, for cutting up, you know, non-vegetarian things like chicken. Um, but yeah, so that's just a, a, a cool little thing. You know, it, it's about buying a Thermomix, but you know, we all like a little freebie. So um, that's the freebie for this month. So if you're ready to go, make sure you have a chat to your consultant. Um, you can always earn a Thermomix as well. Have a chat to your consultant about joining the team. Um, you know, where this is the Star Mixers team tonight doing a little bit of cooking together. I've been around forever. We've got, um, you know, Elaine has only been with us for a very short time and, you know, Sophie and, and Betty a little bit longer. But it's, um, as you can see, all different people just coming together and, and, and cooking and, and share something that we all love um, and, and see great benefit in. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to head back to Elena very quickly. She's going to show us uh, her plating of her beautiful Parmigiana 
Thanks, Thank Elena. You. Thank you. I took it um, out of the oven just a little bit earlier. Person, I personally like it a little bit uh, more golden on the top, but you would leave it on your in the oven until um, the topping is golden and the sauce is bubbling. I've already cut um, and plated the results. So and I've sprinkled a little bit of Parmesan on top. Oh, that looks so beautiful. That's how it looks like. Oh my goodness. So would you have that as a main meal? Would you have something with it or, or that would be a main meal for you? Look, this is actually pretty filling uh, because of the yeah. cheap tomato sauce and um, an eggplant. But you can always have it with a little bit of salad. Yes. But, so, sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> oh, not happy. That's all right, Elena. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you for showing us the uh, Parmigiana. That looks absolutely delicious. Hi. Hi. Is that for lunch tomorrow? Yeah, okay. All right. Well, um, a big thank you to Terry for looking after us this afternoon, looking after the chat this evening, rather. Um, thank you very much for, you know, joining another Vivid Branch cooking classes. There's lots coming up. So have a look on Linktree, um, chat to your consultant. I think we have a picnic class coming up and we've got a salads class coming up, I think, on Saturday, warm and cold salads. Um, so that one could be quite interesting as well. So, um, yeah, reach out to your consultant if you want to get some, um, you know, do a little bit of cooking together. You can always take up the host awards. If you're interested in joining the team and, and coming doing a little bit of cooking, again, reach out to your consultant and uh, there'll be a recording coming to you with the links, um, any tips that we can think of. But thank you so much for joining us in our kitchens. It was lovely to have you. Thank you, big thank you to the girls, Elena, Betty, Sophie and um, Terry for, for helping out and, and sharing their lovely cooking with us all this evening. So thanks very much and uh, stay safe and, and take care. Thank you, Janine. It was great. Thank you. Bye. Sorry for the interruption in the end. Oh, no, look, that that's that's real life, isn't it? We're cooking at home and... She was waiting yeah. for me to take her to bed. She wouldn't go before, so... Uh... Okay. Well, she's waited this long, Mum, so... Yes. We'll, uh, we'll let you go, Elena. Thank you so much Thank for joining so us much, tonight. Everybody. You did a beautiful job. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate, um, appreciate you joining us. Glad you enjoyed it. Oh, Heather, glad to hear you're going to make all of those things. That, that, that fills my cup. That's what we're here for, to inspire. I'm going to make them all too. <laughs> I haven't made your FNG bars, Sophie. I don't know why. I'm going to house, have a house full of boys back very soon. My kids are coming home, so I'll be able to do a little bit more of that style of cooking and, and won't have to worry about my husband and I eating it all on our own. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks, guys. Good night. Good night. I think I'll stop recording.